it is absolutely astonishing how many animals you can find out here in the fields of Mississippi. Hey guys, we're back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild and I'm Lady Legend. Today we're going to be doing the highly anticipated part one of the Mississippi Super Guide. Today we're going to be going through everything you need to know to hunt these five species. Alligators, gray fox, common raccoons, bob white quail, and eastern wild turkey. And the other four species in Mississippi will come along in the second part of the Super Guide. Today's guide will be broken down into chapters, guys, and at the end of each segment, I will show a hotspot map showing you everywhere you will find that species and the best time to hunt them. So also included in today's guide will be max levels, best weapons, diamond trophy rating, max weights, best times, collars, rare variations, and of course, most importantly, is that hotspot map, and I will post all of those hotspot maps to my Discord for you guys to easily reference, and I will leave the link below the video. Now, if you do enjoy today's video, guys, or learn anything at all, I'm gonna ask you to do one thing, smash that like button. It is super amazing for the algorithm, and I really do appreciate it. So thanks, guys, for that, and let's head right into it. So right now, guys, it is 6 a.m., and as you can see, there are all kinds of feed zones. I am right up here at the top of the map. Mississippi is definitely a different kind of map from other maps. I find it is a more challenging map. It is more aimed to the advanced hunter. The reason I say that is because a lot of the time, everything is hidden. This map is very, very thick, so it is very challenging. So hopefully today's guide will make that a lot easier for you. Okay guys, the first thing we're gonna have a look at is the best loadout for Mississippi. So I am carrying with me the Kalman, and the Kalman has been rebuffed, guys. It is so much more powerful than it used to be. It gets more range. It really is a much better rifle now. It also is way less expensive, and the ammo has been reduced quite a lot as well. So the Kalman is good for classes one and two. I don't recommend it for hunting any airborne birds. You don't want to use it for quail. I do like it for raccoons and for gray foxes for those closer range shots. Then we do have the Virant 22 LR, and yes, I have selected this over the Zarza 22 because it has 10 shots, and while I don't mind using the Zarza 22 on things like turkey, when you're hunting quail in the air, you really do need those 10 shots, and that is why I have picked the 22 LR. So then we have the Zarza 308, and you can use that on gators, whitetail, and on black bear. We also have the Zarza 223, which guys is absolutely fantastic for gray fox. It does have the range that the Kalman doesn't. You don't actually need both of these rifles. The 223 almost makes the Kalman obsolete, but because I do have the pack mule skill, I am able to carry an extra three kilograms worth of space, so I am bringing both. And then I do have the Cacciatore 12 gauge. You can bring any shotgun, and mainly that is for those class one species like quail and turkey. I always carry all my ammo with me because it weighs so little, and that way I don't forget anything. I do have the Argus and the Hyperion Scope. And then for lures, we do have the Deer Grunt Collar for Whitetail, the Distressed Fawn Collar for Black Bear, the Jackrabbit Collar for Gray Fox, the Raccoon Squall Collar, which does come with Mississippi. You do have to pay in-game dollars for it. Then we do have the Wild Boar Collar and the Wild Turkey Mouth Collar. Now there is one other collar for turkeys, which I don't have on me because I just don't have room, and that is the Wild Turkey Crow Collar. So the difference between these two guys is the Crow Collar elicits a response from the turkey so you can actually see where they are and the mouth collar actually calls the turkey in so I think I'll be just fine with just the one. I don't have room for first aid or scent eliminator with this loadout but there are no really aggressive creatures on this map. Gators can go aggressive but they really don't go aggressive very often so I'm not gonna worry about it. I do have my apex view and gen zero binoculars. There is a lot of really great night hunting on this map so I do like to carry both of them but one option for you guys is to just bring your apex view so you do have room for something else and then when you go to do night hunting you could just go back to storage and swap your apex views for your gen zeros but I am actually going to carry both of them so that maxes me out just about at 23 kilograms and if you're wondering how to get three extra kilograms of space without having any extra noise when you run around you'll find the pack mule skill under ambusher skills and I do highly recommend it it is game changing I absolutely love having an extra three kilograms worth of space to carry around. 
The first species we're gonna have a look at for today's guide is American alligator, and we do have one right there. There he is, he is a level five. Now, alligators do go to nine legendary. If you are looking for a diamond, you're looking for a nine. Although Jaxi is now saying that eights, once in a very blue moon, can make diamonds, maybe shoot those eights correctly as well. But alligators are actually one of the most challenging species to hunt in the game. What you actually wanna do, first of all, we hunt them in their rest zones. They don't drink and rest zones are absolutely the way to go. So they actually rest from 6 a.m. all the way to 2030. There are several different rest periods in that time, but what you want to do is find them resting on the shore and you want to drop them in their tracks with either a perfect neck or a perfect brain shot, and that is what makes them very challenging. Now because of this, I do like to use a rifle that does have a follow-up shot, so I am using the 308 and before I was using the 303. Those are my two favorite rifles to hunt gators with. Now some people do like to use the 7 mil because it is more powerful, but you don't get that follow-up shot, so I would much prefer something with a follow-up shot. So we're gonna use the 308 here. Now because of his angle, I'm probably not gonna get a perfect neck shot. If you take your shot and miss neck or brain, you wanna follow it up with a lung shot. But basically how they work is if you don't drop them on the shore, they are gonna go for a swim. And if they die really deep down, they will never come to shore. If they die near the surface, they will float up and they will float to you and you will get your gator. So you don't want them to go deep sea diving. All right, here we go. Can't even spot them, so. Okay, I did not get the good shot. Now I want to try and get another shot into him. Oh. Okay, got another shot and he is down to 50. So I think he's gonna float. I don't think he's gonna get too deep. Hopefully I don't have three shots in him. So then you have to be patient and hope that it floats to the top, but I think he will. So gators are a class six species. You can use any four to eight rifle when you are hunting them. But yeah, the 308 from the Modern Rifles pack is doing an amazing job. Now, if you are looking for a diamond gator from tracks, you are looking for a track that's 530 kilograms or 1168.5 pounds. That is their max weight. Are you gonna float? Now there are no collars for gators. Maybe we've lost them. We may have have lost him. Mm -hmm. So that can happen. That is definitely a possibility. He actually started to drop fairly quickly, so I really thought he was going to flow to us. So that is a definite hazard of hunting gators, and that can happen with trophies. That is definitely a hazard, guys. You can lose your diamond or rare gator to deep sea diving, and that's what makes them so challenging. But that also is going to make that shot so tense for you and so much fun. So we are on the coast here, and this coast is absolutely fantastic for rest zones for gators, and most of these zones are for 9 until 12 or 12.30. You can see here I did get a vital shot, but no gators out there for me oh well okay guys so we are now at one of the best spots for gators and this is up here in the top right hand corner at gator lakes all of these lakes are amazing for rest zones for gators and we have a nice broadside level six gator here ready for us to try and take a neck shot so you want to aim either for a perfect neck or a brain shot if you are going for a brain shot you actually want to aim between the ear and the eye I personally like to go for a neck shot. There's just more room for you to take that shot with a neck shot and still get a good shot. Here we go. Oh, I got him! I got him, dropped him. Beautiful. And that is what you're looking to do. Didn't even need to put a follow-up shot into him. You will also find whitetail drinking in the morning all around these lakes but they do get spooked off by gators. Gators spook off every other species on the map. Beautiful shot that was flesh, middle neck, and that is the shot you are looking for. And you can actually hit all along the neck bone here. So when I'm saying there is more room for you to take the shot, that is what I mean. When you're going for a perfect brain shot, I think the brain is right there. You need a really precise shot. Now, if you're looking for a diamond, 492 is the trophy rating for diamond alligator. They actually come in two different common variations being dark brown and olive, and their rears are piebald with less than a 1% spawn rate, and then there is also melanistic and albino, and both are considered to be very rare with a 0.1% spawn rate so very hard to find. And so that is where we were right there. 
And that brings us to the map. Now my very favorite spot to hunt alligators is the west coast. That is where I got my Mela and Diamond Gator in the same zone. Top right corner is also awesome at Gator Lakes and I find the gators like to congregate in the runoffs around the river. But this is where I have found zones on my map so you should have very similar zones on yours. The next species for today's guide is gray fox. Now they do have a drink time. They drink from 1700 or 1730 until 20 or 2030. So you are gonna need those night vision binoculars to hunt gray fox in their drink zone. Now gray fox do go to nine legendary. I have seen eight mythicals make diamond as well as both males and females make diamond. So don't discount the females guys. They are just as diamond potential as the males are, which is fascinating. I actually shot a female diamond gray fox less than two weeks ago. Actually, I shot it right off of this lake on my own map crazy stuff. Now as far as weapons go, with Grey Fox they are a class 2 species, so you can use the Kalman, you can use the Zarza 223, which I think is the best rifle for Grey Fox. You still can use the 243 if you wish, but I am going to use the Zarza on this guy. Now when you are taking a shot on a Grey Fox, you want to take your zeroing into consideration because they are such tiny creatures. With the Zarza 223, it does zero in at 75, 150, and 300 meters, so I am going to zero to 150. But because this Gray Fox is approximately 185 meters away, I am going to slightly aim high to allow for a little bit of bullet drop. But if it is at all possible, try to take your shot from exactly 150 meters so you can zero precisely and take that perfect shot. Here we go. Did I get both of them? I mean, you still can use the original 223 on Gray Fox, but if you do have the Zarza, I would prefer it. So my shot was a little bit on the high side. That was a vital shot. We did get right long there. Now, if you are looking for a diamond, Gray Fox diamond trophy rating is 6.4. Shut up, Dag. Sorry, I forgot to park them. Their max weight track is 6.8 kilograms or 15 pounds if you are picking up tracks to find a diamond. Now the collar for Gray Fox is the Predator Jackrabbit collar and this guy is a gray which is a common fur variation. The other common variations are red and two-tone. There are actually four different rare variations for Gray Fox, all of which are considered to be very rare and they are albino, leucistic, melanistic, and piebald. So this is where we are and this is where I found my nine legendary diamond female Gray Fox. Now, if you could believe it, guys, there are over 90 drink zones for Gray Fox in Mississippi. As you can see, there are just a pile of them on the top coast and all along the river, but my favorite spots are these three lakes here. This lake at the bottom is where I found my nine legendary female diamond Gray Fox, and the red X is where I found my male diamond. The next species for today's guide is the common raccoon. Now, raccoons are now a class two species. They have been changed from class one since the last update, guys. So you no longer can shoot them with birdshot or with the 22. Now I am using the Zarza 223. It is fantastic for raccoons and I do have the newly buffed Coleman on me. Now raccoons go to level five. They can score diamonds at level four and level five. And they actually drink from zero until three or 330 here in Mississippi. This is the only map you will find them on. Now because raccoons are such small creatures, this guy is 200 meters out. I can only zero to 150, so I am gonna aim a little bit high. Beautiful. And splat. Sure didn't take them long to die. Now they have added 10 transfer points along the Mississippi River and you will find them in these boats, guys. Once you find one of these transfer boats, you wanna run right up to it. It will say interact. Once you do, it will take you straight across the river and you can pick up your kill. So that is super handy. They don't show up on the map quite yet, but they will intermittently be along the river. Here is one right here. So there you go, interact. And here we are straight across the river. That is super handy. That was a beautiful double lung shot, 199 meters, and that is the Zarza 223. So if you are looking for a diamond raccoon, they go diamond at 12. They do have to be male to make diamonds. And if you are looking for a max weight track, you're looking for 13 kilograms or 28.6 pounds. 
So this guy is a brown, which is a common variation, as well as blonde and gray. There are actually four rare variations for raccoons. They are all considered to be very rare with a 0.1% spawn rate, and they are blonde, piebald, gray piebald, albino, and melanistic. So lots of rares for raccoons. So this is where we are here, and you will find all kinds of raccoon zones along the top of the river here. Okay guys, we just got a warning call from a raccoon. So the other way to hunt raccoons, if you don't like to hunt them in their drink zone during the nighttime, is to hunt them during their feed and rest zones. They will give you a warning call. I'm carrying here the raccoon squall collar. This is the new collar that does come with the Mississippi DLC. You do have to pay for it in game, but it does have a 500 meter radius. This is in here. <laughs> It is very easy to hide. Generally, if you just stand right beside a tree, it will hide you. But the hard thing is, it is really hard to see the raccoons. And usually, it does take them quite a while to come into your call. They are not in any hurry. Now, the other things you will find out here in these gridded areas are all kinds of cottontail rabbits. You will find gray fox, lots of quail out here. Also, you will find wild hogs and whitetail. Now, when you do get a warning call from a raccoon, usually they don't spook or go nervous right away, so they should come into your call. So this is the callman. And down he goes. It is great for those close range shots, and that was a beautiful look at the penetration from the Kalman now, guys. That is crazy. It literally sliced this raccoon in half. So that was a 14 meter shot. So if you would like to hunt raccoons in their feed zone, they actually feed from 3 until 6 or 6.30, and again from 10 until 13 or 13.30. Now, when you're looking at the map, guys, the light, light green areas, those are the white flower fields, and that is actually where you want to hunt for bob white quail. But before we do that, guys, let's have a look at the map for raccoons. So this is where all of my raccoon drink zones are on the map. You will find quite a lot along the river, not so many along the coast. But of course, if you do want to hunt them in their feed zones, definitely hunt them in the gridded areas during their feed times. The next species for today's guide, guys, is Eastern Wild Turkey. Now, turkeys do not have a drink time. You will need to hunt them in their feed and rest times. Their max level is level three. They can go diamond at level two or level three, and they are a class one species. So you can hunt them with birdshot, with any shotgun, or the 22 LR. The Zarza 22 will also do well, and you can use the Coleman as well. Now, I actually shot a diamond turkey right out of this zone live last night, and diamonds will be male. So this zone is from 4 until 8 or 8.30. I like to hunt them at about 5.30 in the morning because I do like that daylight. And you will find definitely whitetail out here. You will find wild hogs. There's whitetail. And the other thing you will see a lot of out here are black bears. And I'm actually excited to see a male because I have been seeing predominantly females out here. And there's a turkey. All right. Where are you going, my friend? Oh, oh we got it. We got it. I uh, see the hunting pressure. Now there are two collars for turkeys. I am only carrying on me the wild turkey mouth collar. Now when you use the mouth collar, it will bring your turkey into you. Now I have a terrible wind, so he may not come in because of my wind. But out of the two collars, this is the one that I really like to bring. Ah, uh, there he is. There he is. So that was the Cacciatore. It is a lot of fun to use and I do like having six shots with it. So he is actually a gold 4.3. If you are looking for a diamond turkey, they go diamond at 4.6. This is a bronze, which is a common fur variation for turkeys. Their other common plumage types are light brown, light bronze, and brown. And they have three rare variations. Leucistic is rare with a spawn rate of about 1%. And they also come in albino and melanistic, both which are considered to be very rare and have a less than 0.1% spawn rate. So very, very rare. Aren't they beautiful? Look at the colors in them. They're absolutely gorgeous. Now, the other thing you can do with turkeys, guys, there are wild turkey sentry and strutting decoys. You can put decoys down and lure your turkeys in. And this is where we are on the map. Now, if you are picking up tracks looking for a diamond turkey, their max weight track is 11 kilograms or 24 pounds. So these four areas on the map are your best spots to find feed zones for eastern wild turkeys. 
I just shot a diamond right in the middle at the top. The left circle is absolutely fantastic, but you should find all kinds of feed zones in these four areas for Eastern Wild Turkey. The last and final species for today's guide is bobwhite quail. Now, as I mentioned before, guys, the light areas on the map are these beautiful white flower fields. And if you know what these flowers are called, definitely let me know in the comments. I can't remember right now. But this is the best place to hunt for quail because when they flush, you don't want them to be in the forest because you will never see them when they flush into the trees. It is just too tough. But when they're out in the open, it is a lot easier. Now with quail, they do have the same mechanic as pheasants. You do have to shoot them when they are airborne or no score. So they have to be flying. All right, we have some. Now, when I'm hunting quail, I like to take with me a shotgun. I do have the Catchatory 12 gauge because I do like having six shots. I am also carrying the 22 LR because I do like having those 10 shots as well. It is really important when you're hunting quail. When you run out at five with the Zarza 22, it's just not enough. It's frustrating to me and that is why I've selected the 22 LR instead of the Zarza 22. Now I don't recommend the Kalman for hunting quail because it's like shooting quail with the 243. It just doesn't work very well. Now when you are hunting them, you don't want to get a warning call and go bolting at them. They will not stick to the ground like pheasants do. They will flush immediately and they could be 200 meters away from you making it impossible to take a shot with the shotgun and very difficult with the 22. You'll want to get closer. All right, what do we got? We got a two and a one. All right, I'm going to zero to 150. So you want to leave the shot And you do want those 10 shots, and when you run out of ammo, keep running while you reload. You don't want them to get away. They will eventually land and go back up, giving you a chance to sneak up on them and get a little closer. What are you? All right. Ooh, that's a nice one. And just like that, down he goes. So while you're running, reload as fast as you can. He is going to flush again. Come on, baby, flush for me. Look at that, I did get him. Very sweet, I didn't even realize. So he is a silver, this is a brown, guys. There are common variations for bobwhite quail are gray, brown, and red brown. And the only rare they come in is albino, which is very rare, less than a 1% spawn rate. Now, if you are looking for a diamond bobwhite quail, their diamond trophy rating is 260.5. I do believe you can find diamonds in level twos and level threes. Of course, twos are gonna be harder to find diamonds in. And I do believe the diamonds are females only. So at close ranges, guys, you want to use your shotgun without the scope, although sometimes it can be handier to have the scope on because quail are very, very tiny birds. And sometimes they can actually run along the ground and disappear without even flushing. And there he goes. They can be very sneaky that way. All right. What is happening? I am terrible with the shotgun today. Oh, is this guy... And splat. Beautiful. All right, so that is a red brown and another silver. It's hard to even find golds in bobwhite quail. They are going to be very tough to find diamonds in. Now, they don't have a drink time. I generally like to hunt bobwhite quail from 4 until 7.30 in that feed zone time. I like to set the time for 5.30 so that I don't have to do it in the dark. They are tough enough in the daylight. They also feed from 1300 until 16 or 1630. And there are no collars for bobwhite quail. Now, if you are looking for that diamond, definitely pick up their tracks. Max weight track for bobwhite quail is 0.25 kilograms or 0.55 pounds. And that could lead you to a need zone for that diamond quail that you are looking for. So this is where we are on the map, guys. And I like to hunt them at about 530 in all the very light green areas. Those are my favorite places to check for quail. Now they can be in other areas, but I just find that is the easiest way to hunt them because you can actually see them. Okay guys, all of these gridded areas is where you will find bobwhite quail. But as I mentioned before, my favorite places to hunt them are in the very light green areas where the white flower fields are because they aren't gonna flush into the forests. They will usually give you a warning sign, but one way to find zones is just to run around the fields find their need zones, and then you can target them. But this is where you will find bobwhite quail. 
A lot of work goes into these guides, guys. They are very labor intensive. So if you did enjoy today's video, guys, or learn anything at all, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and smash that like button. It is super amazing for the algorithm and I really do appreciate it. And that is definitely gonna wrap it up for part one of the Mississippi Super Guide. Part two will be out in a few days with the four remaining species with all of the info and all of the hotspot maps so that you can hunt every single species in Mississippi so much easier. That is my hope. That's gonna wrap it up for this one and we will definitely see you guys in the next one. Take care guys. If you guys would like to learn amazing hotspots for every species in Call of the Wild, definitely click on these where and when super guides.